Hi. This video is based on the video I did before constructing the tube from the cardboard master. We've got three datum planes which we don't need in the moment so we're gonna switch them off first. We also don't need the datum line and what we want to do is we want to construct a secondary tube which goes out of that tube on a defined angle. So we create another datum plane and as we see as we just loaded our project there is no active body. We first have to toggle this body active before we can work on it. That's normal in part design. Now we're going to select the top plane of our tube. On the top we want to create a new datum plane. We leave it at the selected face As you can see, Groove Phase 2 was selected. We give it a name called DP Top Outlet. You can change the names by selecting with F2. Switch that one off and select the same face once again. Create another datum plane. But this time we want to change the offset. We want to move it down in C direction. Finally to 100 millimeters below the previously created datum plane. This is going to be the reference for where our side port will end. With F2 and copying and selecting datum plane 4, F2, pasting and finalizing to DP top outlet offset, I give it another name. Time to save it and begin the next step. We want to create a third datum plane. This time we select the middle plate. Unfortunately I selected the edge which was wrong. I have to reselect and get the plane itself. Now we want to slant that one. We give it a roll. Sometimes you have to find out the jaw pitch or roll depends on how you started. So now we have three datum planes and again we give it a proper name that later on tells us what it's meant to be. This time we call it DP Top Outlet Offset Slanted. So that looks pretty nice. We do now have three datum planes. Next thing is we need a datum line. We create a datum line on datum plane 5, which is the smaller one. I selected it before I started and it is on objects X so it's in the middle. As we can see when I move it around a little bit there is a line at the point where both datum planes cross each other. So the next thing that we do need is another datum plane. This one, we for this one we select 
I was slanted. They don't play. We select another datum plane and as the reference we want to have the slanted datum plane. We can see it being created somewhere at the top and now as we selected it it's exactly on the datum plane and we want to move it away in Z direction. 180 millimeters, which is going to be the exact length of our side tube from the center of the big tube to its inlet port. We will see this later on. So I switch the tube on once more and to make it easier to work with it in the next steps, I give it a transparency so we can look through it. That's handy for such operations where we have to deal with the inside of objects with crossing of tubes. So the next step will be that we create a new body. Within that body, we create a sketch on our datum plane and to be able to work with this datum plane, we have to switch off a couple of other datum planes because they would now interfere and we couldn't see where we are. So with selecting them and we can see again we can't select something because there's still objects, obstacles in the way. We switch off the groove itself, we don't need it in the moment. And now we're able to see the center of our new sketch. We create a circle centered on the new sketch. We give that one a diameter, or better say a radius that gives it a 30 millimeters radius resulting in a 60 diameter. It's fully constrained and we can carry on. We can switch on our groove again, which finally is the tube. So we switch on the groove and we select create pad sorry the mouse didn't move there we give that pad a length And the length is 130 millimeters. For some reasons it was switched to reversed. That's wrong. We need to switch it to normal. And we can see it protrudes through the wall of our tube. I want to switch on the top outlet slanted datum plane because that one is where our tube should virtually end. I try to do it up to face. That does not work. For some reason sometimes it works, sometimes it won't. So that's not the right thing to do. Let's try it with 
extrude to first. So it extrudes to the first face in its direction, which is the outer face of the tube. We try another one, this time up to face, to the datum plane. That would work, but now it looks inside the tube and we would have to create another pocket to take that away. So we stay with two first. So this, this have been a couple of ways you could have modified the length. So the next step we want to do is we move it so we can select the outlet face of our side tube. We create a new sketch, which, uh, sorry, didn't show up in the video. With external geometry, we fetch the outside circle of that face. We create a new circle, and this circle we constrain to the center of the outside tube circle. So that's fine. Next step is we create a line. Which again will give us the dimensioning of the thickness or of the yeah, the thickness of the wall that our tube has. I move it around a little bit and constrain it to both circles with point on object. This time I choose another way to set the fixed point. So next is we make it perpendicular to the outside circle and to fix it this time we make it horizontal our circle and we fix the circle's diameter by in this case we just choose three millimeters so now we do have a circle there and next step is we create a pocket and this pocket goes up to the first face. So it just goes through the wall and not any further. So that's fine. And finally we want to create another ring. So to speak, a flange. We create a new sketch on the pre-selected face of the outlet. Again, we want to select some external geometry. I choose the inside of our small tube and I create a circle. Just move it outside a little bit. Don't try to put circle on circle. This is going to fail because it will try to make a tangent and circle to circle can't be tangent. So. Next is another line in construction line mode. The blue lines are 
construction lines. That was a little bit wrong, which I'm going to correct afterwards. I don't want to constrain it to the center. I want to constrain it to another circle. So I remove the constraint and constrain it again, circle to circle. Again perpendicular and again we make it horizontal. The next step is define the length which is the width of the flange from the inner diameter to the outer diameter. So now we have a new pad we're going to create. We move that one out six millimeters and finally we will create a last pocket. Obviously there could be ways to do that smarter. For instance I could have created a donut here instead of another pad with another pocket resulting in a donut style flange but it gives me more flexibility to have as less as less as possible constraints in each sketch so finally we are ready with that construction Thanks for watching it. Give me a like. Maybe join my channel and look out for more videos dealing with PreCAD in 017. Thank you.